Hey guys, I'm going to be giving you some basic information on functional lucid dreaming, I guess. So, first of all, the functional definition of a lucid dream is any dream in which you're aware that you're currently dreaming. So, if you want this to happen, there are a few things you can do to increase your chances. The first thing you'll want to do is start a dream journal. Uh, the purpose of this is twofold. First of all, as you've probably known throughout your life, dreams are really hard to remember. There's some kind of mechanism that makes you start forgetting them pretty rapidly uh, as you get up. So what you're going to want to do is, instead of getting up and running around immediately in the morning, stay in bed for a few seconds, a few minutes, and try to remember backwards from whatever fragment you have left of your dream what you were just dreaming about. And if you remember your whole dream, that's great. Write it down in your dream journal. If you remember fragments, that's fine too. Just write down as much as you can remember every morning. The other purpose for this is to try to start to find patterns in your dreams. A lot of people have some regularly occurring kind of dream traits. Say you meet people who are dead, or a certain friend is off in your dreams, or you go to outlandish landscapes. So a reality check is something that you want to do as often as you can throughout your day and make it a habit. And it's basically an action that if you're dreaming and you try to do it, will alert you to the fact that you're dreaming. So some popular ones include trying to push your finger through your palm, which if you're dreaming in theory it should go through, or checking your watch twice and seeing if the time is the same, or reading text twice. My favorite reality check is to plug your nose and try to breathe. Just like that. And if you're in a dream, you'll be successful in breathing, but you'll still feel your nose pressed shut. So you get this strange feeling of air going through your pinched nostrils, and that'll definitely make you lucid. So the idea is to do this whenever you notice something strange, or just remember, whenever you remember to. So here's where you can start using your dream signs. Say a certain friend is always in your dreams. Whenever you see them, do a reality check. And after you've done that, when it doesn't work, when you're in real life, Imagine what you would do if you were in a dream. So it's nice to sometimes have a plan of what you want to do, like you would you know, stop and try to talk to someone or go outside or whatever. Just try to go through what you would be doing if you are in a dream. And do this as often as you can throughout the day, and hopefully, eventually, you'll do it while you're sleeping on time, and you'll become lucid. The third thing you can do is just to think about lucid dreams a lot. So before you go to bed, try to find a lucid dreaming forum online or something, and just read stories of people's lucid dreams, their dream journals, whatever you want. Just thinking about the issue it seems to make it more likely that you'll have a lucid dream yourself. You kind of want to increase your awareness and your, your amount of thinking about whether or not you're dreaming at all times. So all these three techniques are surrounding what is called a DILD, dream-induced lucid dream. This is, as I said, when you're in a dream and you do a reality check or something tips you off to the fact that you're dreaming and you become lucid. And this is opposed to the other type, which is a bit more complicated and a bit more, uh, I don't know, advanced, which is called a wild, and that's a wake-induced lucid dream. And there you go directly from a conscious waking state to a conscious sleeping state without losing consciousness. So you're basically riding through from being awake to being asleep without actually losing consciousness. And uh, this can be a little bit scary if you don't know what to expect, so if you're going to try this, I recommend you do a little bit of research. You can go into sleep paralysis or have some pretty convincing hallucinations. So you don't want to have some kind of panic attack or believe you're being abducted by aliens. <laughs> there are some theories that a lot of the alien abduction experiences are actually a result of sleep paralysis. So what you do in these sorts of situations is basically uh, either wake back to bed or you do this in the afternoon. Wake back to bed is when you sleep for four to six hours, then get up for some amount of activity, maybe a few minutes to an hour and then go back to sleep trying to do this wild thing. And basically you just lie very still, you don't move, and you try to keep your mind active so that you don't lose consciousness as you fall asleep. And it's pretty difficult, uh, but it is theoretically possible. And Stephen LeBellish himself claims that he could do it any time he wanted during the afternoon naps, which is kind of the holy grail of lucid dreaming. It would be pretty awesome to be able to So once you're in a lucid dream, what do you do? Well, you can pretty much do anything. <laughs> it seems like whatever you expect to happen will generally happen, from my experience. Um, but there are some basic rules that you should try to follow if you want to have a good experience. One of those is to keep calm and not panic or get really excited. It seems like high levels of emotion and excitement tend to make you wake up sooner. So you want to stay calm and you want to try to ground yourself because the dreams kind of have a tendency to sort of break up, become fuzzy, and then suddenly you're, you're in your bed again. So what you can do is try to focus on the dream surroundings. Try to engage as many of your five senses as possible. If there's grass, feel the grass. Pick it up, smell it, put it in your mouth. It doesn't matter, it's dream grass. But try to engage yourself as much as possible with your surroundings. Some people suggest rubbing your hands together or looking at things very closely. Just all these sorts of things to try to really ground yourself and stay calm and try to make sure that you're having a full dreaming experience before you start running around in this kind of half asleep. Due to the kind of strange relationship between expectation and reality that seems to exist in lucid dreams, a lot of people report that it actually works for them to just yell some phrases like, 
increase lucidity or like improve lucid dream or things like that and uh, it seems like that actually helps them so if you want you can also try those sorts of things uh, in general in terms of having fun adventures in lucid dreams I think it really does help to have some kind of plan for example one of my original plans was to have a marker pull it out of my pocket just by expecting it to be there draw a door on the wall open it and find a dragon that I can ride because that would be awesome uh, I had a lucid dream I managed to pull the marker out by expecting it which was very great I drew a door and I opened it, but at that point I started losing my concentration, things got a little bit fuzzy, and it wasn't a dragon, it was like some kind of strange Pokemon, and eventually I kind of went back into my dream, lost consciousness, and just continued dreaming regularly. But if I hadn't had that plan, maybe I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did. So in general, get a dream journal, try doing reality checks, uh, if you want to be more adventurous, look into wilds and try those sorts of more advanced, complicated techniques and try to have a plan, stay calm, and get yourself grounded before you start running around. And have fun lucid dreaming.